Here's a really weird pattern in React that's actually in the official docs. It's called the abandon render pattern. And this is what this looks like. So here we have a count state variable with an initial value of zero. And then we have this pref count variable here, which gets its initial value from the state of count. These are essentially two variables and they're meant to be in sync. And this previous count here is kind of acting like the previous value of the count on the previous render. And the way that we're doing that is by this piece of code here, which checks in the body of the component if pref count is not equal to the count. And if it's not, we're going to call set previous count with the count, which essentially means that we're setting state as the component is rendering. So essentially what this is going to do is on the first render of the component, count is going to be zero, pref count is going to be zero because it gets its value from the count. So this code here is not going to run because pref count and count are equal. Then you press a button, you change the count, you increment it to one, the component is going to be render, and then the pref count will still be zero. So this code is going to run, and then you're going to set pref count to the current value of the count, which is now one. Now, when you do that, when you set state in the body of the component, what React is going to do is it's going to abandon that render, which means that it's going to continue all the way until it comes here to this return value, and then it's going to stop, it's not going to update the UI, and it's going to start all over again with the new value of the state that you just set. And that's it, that's the pattern. Now, important, this is only allowed if your setter function here is inside of a conditional, like an if statement, because if it's not, right, you're gonna set the previous count, you're gonna get an infinite loop, and the component is never actually going to render. And this pattern is really useful when you wanna track the previous value of something and then compare it with the current value and run any code that you want. This is the official recommended way of doing that, and that's why it's in the official React docs.